Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Yes, he said it. The Federal Reserve said that we are going to have more pain. What does that mean? I've had time to digest what he said in his eight-minute speech, and it's quite different from how he spoke before and other Fed chairmen have spoken. And so it's really worth paying attention to. In a nutshell, he's telling everybody that he's not going to pivot. He kind of said, there's no Fed pivot. He didn't say that, but that's the message that he put out. In other words, we're just a few weeks away from an election. I don't care. He said, we are going to keep raising rates and we're going to keep them there until the job is done. What's the job? 2% inflation. We're rocking about 9% right now. We're not going to get there by Christmas. So he's saying, we're going to keep rates there until the job is done. Now, historically, the Federal Reserve has been famous for clamping down. The economy starts to slow down. Layoffs are coming. And then they go, oh, I'm sorry. And then they lower rates again. We didn't mean to do that. He's coming out now and saying he's in it for the long run. He's going to keep going. He's going to raise rates and he's going to keep them there until he sees consistent 2% inflation. Not one month. July of next year, 2%. Okay. Put the rates back down. He's not going to do that. That's what he's saying. Now, the markets have not believed him up until this point. The markets have said he's going to pivot. You know, we got an election coming up. You know, he just got appointed by the president. So he doesn't want to mess with that. Well, yeah, he got appointed. And now he's saying, I'm in charge. And we have the task of getting inflation under control because that's far worse than any of the disruptions in the economy or any recessions that we're going to see runaway inflation does more damage than a recession he's not telegraphing saying that we're maybe probably going to have a recession he's telling you we will we've already had two quarters of growth that are negative which technically is a recession but he's also saying that uh, um, despite that you know the numbers are looking like the economy is still pretty resilient, pretty strong. Unemployment's low. That's going to change. And uh, what does it mean for housing? It's really uh, a weird market right now. Because you can see here that our listings have plateaued. They come up and they're kind of staying right there. What's really behind the numbers on that is the number of new listings each week is actually getting lower by the week. In other words, people deciding that now they want to list their home, there are fewer and fewer of them. And our buyers are staying at about 2,700, 2,800 every seven days on the seven-day average that I track off the MLS. You may hear some different numbers, but bottom line is it's low as it's ever been, except for we'll break the record this week because it's Labor Day weekend coming up. So that number will dip down to nothing um, just because people are traveling. So you've got this low number of sales, inventory that's about 2018 levels, which at the time, and still is, historically low compared to what used to be the average of listings were running around 27,000 homes. Now we're roughly sitting at about 19,000, so almost there. But it's not climbing. We were climbing at about 1,000 homes a week. Now we're going up maybe 300. And the reason that the number's climbing is not because the new listings are flooding the market. It's because the ones that have been put on have not been selling. Now there are some prices out there that are continue to come down and down. The iBuyers and the investors have been forced to lower their prices. But keep in mind, they started at a very high mark. So they came in hot. They marked them even hotter. And now they're coming back down to reality. And uh, they're doing it rather quickly. So we're seeing when it comes to price reductions, the majority of the price reductions we see are from investors and iBuyers. We have like 4,000 price reductions this week. And uh, 2,000, almost 2,200 of the listings that are out there right now are just between open door and offer pad. So when they make a move, it affects price reductions. Does it affect appraisals? No, not really. I don't think so. Simply because... If, it, if that kind of movement would affect appraisals, then them overpaying for the homes would have affected appraisals too, and they probably did. 
So give an example, they buy a house for 500 and they mark it up to 600. Well, what's the appraised value? Well, 600 didn't sell. So they had to come back down to 500 or maybe 480. Now, when they bought it for 500, that affects the appraisal. That's a closed sale happened in the you know, past three months that gets registered. Asking price doesn't mean squat. So if they tried to ask 600 for it after putting in new carpet and, and uh, cleaning the bathroom, then uh, they're going to have to pull it back down to 500. That's not a big dip in appraisals. Asking prices are coming down across the board. With the outlook of interest rates going up and staying up, we could see this market just kind of staying where it is now for a long time. People are not going to sell their homes because interest rates have gone up. They have no reason to do that. The majority of homeowners are not going to sell their homes even if they end up with negative equity. Because what do you gain? Well, if you had negative equity, and people have made comments, people are going to start selling their homes, they have negative equity. No, they're not, because then they got to write a great big fat check at the closing table. So they're not. They're going to stay put. I've done it several times. What could happen is people are just, it's kind of like looking at your 401k. When your 401k goes down, you don't close the account, do you? <laughs> if you're sitting in a mortgage that's in the low threes and you like your payment and you still have your job, at the moment, in the next two years, you're not going to care about your equity. You're going to care, but you're not going to be in a panic situation. Oh my gosh, I'm about to lose everything. I'm going to get out. Because we all know with inflation over time, Assets continue to go up in value, and homes will eventually turn around and start to go back up. But I think we're just going to see some pricing adjustments here that we're going to be living with for the foreseeable future. I don't like to predict going out long term, but after what the chairman has laid out for us, I think I don't need to be a uh, scholar from Harvard to tell you that Housing is not, house prices are not coming up, interest rates don't look like they're coming down, and prices will continue to have their slow slide down in sales prices. Nationally, there was a headline that said, sales prices down for the first time in 24 months. And I look and it was down 0.77. There's always devil in the details behind the headlines. So that's no big deal. Uh, those numbers are going to increase. Uh, prices are coming down and we're just going to continue to watch it here on the channel but you only know that if you subscribe so please subscribe so that you can be the first to know thanks